Hey, thanks for checking out my shop tour video. I'm Brett from Brett's Basement Woodshop, and welcome to my woodshop. I started this YouTube channel about a year and a half ago, and I figured it was time for a shop tour video. So here we go. We'll start with the shop itself. This is a small shop. This main room here is 176 square feet. Uh, it's about 16 and a half feet long and then 10 and a half feet wide. And this little area back here is 30 square feet. It's about four feet, nine inches across, and then just a little over six feet deep. The two areas combined is 206 square feet. And when I bought this house, the basement was unfinished. And the floors were bare concrete and some of the walls were bare concrete. There were some rooms built down here, but it wasn't really finished out. So I knocked down walls and put up new walls. I put in a subfloor in the whole basement, not just the shop. And what that does is allow air to flow underneath the OSB subfloor so that that vapor can dissipate up and through the walls. And that's worked out really well. There is no musty smell in this basement. It's super dry and climate controlled and it's beautiful. So yay me. Um, I would have loved to make the whole basement a wood shop, but I have a wife too, so <laughs> um, she, she won that battle. So on the other side of this door is a family room with a 100 inch projection screen and some couches. And then on the other side of the stairs here is a laundry room and then this shop. And I had two primary concerns other than, you know, the utility of the shop for my family's comfort. I wanted to um, minimize the amount of sound that penetrated the rest of the house and dust. I wanted to make sure that dust wasn't getting out of the shop. So for the sound, the ceiling and walls are insulated. For the walls that I did build, I used two by sixes at the sole plate and top plate, and then I staggered the two by four studs so that I could wrap insulation in between them. I don't have any video footage of that uh, when I was building it, but I do have some pictures, so I'll put those up on the screen. And the ceiling too is stuffed full of rock wool insulation. Rock wool, you may or may not know, is really fire retardant. So if, if a fire ever did start in here, it would take a long while for it to get to the rest of the house. So that insulation doesn't make it sound proof, but it does definitely dampen the amount of sound that's coming from the shop. You can still hear it when you're upstairs, but it's not nearly as noisy or intrusive as it would have been without the insulation. And for dust control, that's been working out pretty well too. This is an exterior door. So it's got a gasket all around. I'm thinking about making a long version and a short version of this video. So depending on which one you're watching, there is another version out there. So if you want more detail, I have a tendency to ramble and over explain things. Thank God for video editing. But for those of you who want more detail, I'll have a longer version of this video. But if you're just looking for the quick and dirty, I'm going to make one of those too. So depending on what your preference is, there is another version if you want to switch over. I'll have links in the description to both. This drill press is one of the first woodworking tools that I bought and it's a benchtop version so it needed something to sit on and had this old desk that my grandpa built so I turned it into a drill press stand. His memory is kind of distant but it's really cool to have something that he built with his own hands and well it's not the greatest drill press stand it leaves a lot to be desired. It does have some storage but mostly it's sentimental value because my grandpa made it. And then back here, I just have just little off cuts and bits and pieces that we all collect. I just want to say a little bit more about this room that looks like a sauna. It does get pretty hot in the winter time, but it's not a sauna. It's the furnace room. And I made this room as small as I could, so it wouldn't take up as much shop space, but still big enough to get around the furnace and do work on it if need be. I use this room for a little bit of dust-free storage, but there's not a ton of storage space in there. Moving on to more woodworky things. This is my 14 inch resaw bandsaw from Grizzly. Uh, this was a gift from my wife. In fact, all the tools that I have were either purchased with my own money or a gift from my family, either Christmas or Father's Day, something like that. But anyway, back to the saw, it's got a 12 inch resaw capacity. One thing I really don't like about it is the fence. When I, I get it set and then I lock it in, it changes. And I don't know how to get it to stop doing that. I've tried different adjustments and I just cannot get this, this fence rail system to, to work well. So I may be upgrading that at some point. This little guy over here is my shop vac, which is one of the noisiest machines in my shop. So to control the noise coming from the shop vac, I built an MDF box and lined it with carpet and just set that over the top of it. And that works pretty well actually. Operates on a remote, 
So I don't, I don't know how well that's picking up on the microphone here, but I'm sitting right next to it. I can run this without hearing protection, whereas I couldn't before. Usually I have this remote hanging from a drywall screw in the ceiling. I made two videos about this dust collector. I'll have links to those on screen here and down in the description. And behind this door is what my family calls the dungeon. It's kind of a mess back here. What it is is a crawl space that is a dirt floor covered with plastic, but there's enough space between the dirt floor and the, the floor above. There isn't room for me to stand up fully, but I could do a duck walk or just kneel upright. But I just use it for some lumber storage and storage of other household items and half-used paint cans and all kinds of DIY project stuff. Uh, it's a mess. I, I, there's not really a lot of room to move around. I don't like putting stuff in there because it's hard to get to. But at least I have a little bit more room for lumber storage that I don't have room for in this main part of my shop. Prior to building this bank of drawers and countertop, a lot of my small tools and supplies were in totes and cardboard boxes that were just kind of strewn everywhere. It was real chaos. So having a bunch of drawers of different depths has really been a big help for organization. There's still a lot more I'd like to do. I'm thinking about doing a French cleat wall here to have easier access to things. Have it visible but up and out of the way. Thinking also about adding some cubbies up here for like my small hand tools. So that's definitely something I'm going to do eventually is more storage on this wall. And building this also gave me another work surface besides my table saw. Here's another area for future improvement. This area is kind of a mess. Right now it serves as storage for various offcuts of sheet goods, uh, things like that. My clamp rack is super simple. It's just a one by that is pocket hole screwed to the wall. So I definitely want to create some clamp storage that works better and looks better. Right now I just have everything clamped to the board. I'd, I'd really rather be able to just kind of pull it off and use it rather than having to undo it each time. So I'm moving around the corner here. I was a consumer on YouTube University for a long time before I became a contributor. Most of what I've learned about woodworking I learned on YouTube University and I've gotten inspiration from all kinds of creators. I, To tell you the truth I can't remember where the whiteboard miter box came from but I've seen at least two maybe three YouTube woodworkers that had a whiteboard as part of their dust shroud around their miter saw. So I didn't come up with the idea, I stole it from someone else. But I'll tell you what, it does, it's not 100%, but it does control the dust cloud that tends to get on everything from the miter saw. So I am glad I built it. And I made a video about that as well. And it's got its own dedicated shop back underneath and it's piped up through and into the floor of the dust shroud. I can make small miter adjustments with the panels in place. I can still do like 10 or 12 degree, maybe. This way a little bit easier. Maybe up to 15 degrees this way. But anything wider than that, I just take, these are just on there with magnets. And then I can extend my wings all the way out. Back in there is um, the vacuum port and as you can see there's a lot of room back here for dust to collect and, and I don't really care that it doesn't make it all down to the vacuum. The goal is just to keep it from coming out into the shop and it does work for that. And this is another idea that I stole from another YouTuber. This panel has to come off for this to work. And I didn't really plan this this way, but this um, part of the tabletop, when it sits on the miter saw, is just at the right height for outfeed for the planer. As you probably know, a planer weighs like 80 pounds, so it's nice to have it where I can just swing it up instead of lifting it up onto a tabletop or something like that. Continuing on down the line this here. This is my outfeed table. It's attached to the saw cabinet with, I forget what the hardware is called, but it's some sort of lockable shelf bracket that ratchets up into place. And um, I got this idea from Colin Kinnett on Woodwork Web. He built something almost exactly like this. And he has the same rigid table saw. And just 
swings up into place and it doesn't want to lock anymore so I have to manually do that. Yeah. So it does its job of catching things coming off the back of the saw but it's not super stable um, so I don't do any work on it. It's simply just an outfeed. Then I made a quick release trigger for both of the brackets so I can lower it back down with one hand. This has been needing an upgrade for quite some time so I've been making plans to come up with a combination outfeed slash assembly slash workbench. Of course it's going to be on casters so that I can wheel it out of the way when I need to use the planer and it'll be roughly the dimensions of the saw and I don't know about 30 inches deep. I'm actually going to come up with plans that I can offer for people to uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to offer them for free or for purchase. Uh, that remains to be seen but make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on because Obviously, I will be making video content about that build. So this is my new dust collection setup. This is the cheapest impeller motor that I could find on the interwebs. It's made by Bucktool. It has a 550 CFM, 6.5 amp, and of course a 4 inch opening. And then I repurposed my Rockler dust collector bucket and made a new top for it. Made another video about that to accommodate the 4 inch hose which I didn't have before. And like I say, I'll have integrated dust collection inside the mobile outfeed table, assembly table, workbench, multifunction table. I don't know what to call it yet. I'm not gonna give a demonstration because I don't wanna have to put a dust mask on, but it is a lot quieter than the shop vac, I'll tell you that. And the last thing is my router table. It of course is on wheels too. It's on a Bora cart. and my oscillating belt and spindle sander lives underneath on the cart. This router tabletop did not come with the lift. That was an add-on and I'm so glad that I added the lift because before that I had to get on my knees and work above and below the table and it just was hard to do, inaccurate and a, kind of a pain to change bits but now I can do it all from above the table and that's so much easier. So definitely recommend a router lift if you have the money for it. So that's all I've got for the shop tour. Thanks for joining me. I hope you got some tips and tricks out of it. Um, feel free to steal any of the ideas that you saw me use. That's what I did. I just go out there on the YouTubes and collect ideas and make it work for my shop. I had a lot of fun showing you around my shop. I hope you enjoyed it too. Give it a like if you did. If you have any ideas of how I could do things differently, any comments, any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I do definitely read all the comments. I mean, I only have a thousand subscribers, so it's not that hard. I do reply to most of them as well. If you want to have more of a back and forth conversation with me, check me out on Instagram. I'll put the link on the bottom, also the link in the description. That way we can have more of a conversation. You can't really do that as well on YouTube. So we'll see you on the next video. Until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other. Hey, thanks for check, uh, checking. I'm Brett from Brett's Basement. Whoa. Did I say that right? <laughs> this is... I'm filming, so that's fun. Ouch, I gotta get off my knee. And this has its own dedicated... Oh! Gosh, that got tight. Okay. That used to... <laughs> that used to come out of there easier. Maybe because it's summertime. Oh my gosh! There. <laughs>